this is insane. This is absolutely insane. Well, that was nuts. Let's just start off with the specs of this vehicle because they're kind of crazy. There are three different models to choose from. You have the single motor rear wheel drive, which has a zero to 60 time of 6.5 seconds, has 250 miles or more of range, and can tow 7,500 pounds. Then you have the dual motor all wheel drive version, which is a zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds, 300 plus miles, and can tow 10,000 pounds. And then you have a tri-motor design. This is the first Tesla officially announced other than the Roadster that will have the tri-motor design. This one gets zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, has a 500 plus mile range. I can't wait to test that. And a 14,000 pound towing capacity. Insane. As the event went, as the design is, as these specs are, this is insane all around. That's the theme here, I guess, in this whole thing. Let's talk about the design. Holy shit. Uh, this looks like a concept car. I can't believe they're, they're actually going to make this. It is not something that I imagine many people being attracted to. I got a lot of text messages asking if this was a joke. I personally kind of expected there to be a, just kidding, here's the other one. But it fits very well with Elon's comments previously about it being crazy futuristic and it actually fitting that Blade Runner theme. If you look at the original Blade Runner movie, the way the cars were designed, it was spot on with actually how this design came out. Um, it's pretty crazy though, and it, it has some unique features in, in how they did it. And, and so let's talk about that real quick. One of the features is this exoskeleton, which is just essentially the outside of the truck. And it's made from this ultra hard, 30 times cold rolled, stainless steel structural skin, as they call it, which is very similar to what the new SpaceX Starship is made from. Yes, the one that just blew its lid. And in the demo, we see Franz banging on a regular car, regular truck door with a hammer, and then the Cybertruck and it did no damage at all to the Cybertruck. In fact, I heard that they had been doing this all day. They were just sick of banging on it. So that's kind of interesting. And I guess that's, that's good, but I'm not sure what that means for crash tests and crumple zones and all kinds of other safety things. So we'll see kind of where this goes from here, but I, it seems insane that they made a vehicle so structurally durable. And I think that that maybe opened up some of the interior possibilities. They also have an armored glass or transparent metal as they were calling it. There you go. So first, first this is regular glass. This is like normal glass, car glass. We wanna show you what happens with normal car glass. Shatters immediately with a little ball. Now I'll show you Tesla armor glass. <laughs> Nothing. But then a real world test happened and, and we got this. Oh my God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Uh, <laughs> should we try on the rear? <laughs> Sorry? Okay. It didn't go through. Let's so that's a, that a plus side. Let's try the rear. Right. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh man, it didn't go through. Now in their defense, I heard that this was above the 50th time that they had thrown that ball at that window. And so that would have made sense, but that didn't go well. And I think that kind of set the tone for the rest of the presentation, unfortunately. And as my good friend, Zach from Jerry Rig Everything says, glass is glass and glass breaks. After they demoed that, they moved on to the adaptive air suspension, which is 
pretty cool and probably a very useful feature for people that are towing things or putting you know big heavy objects in and out of the back of the the truck it doesn't really look like a truck again it doesn't have that that distinctive shape which elon harped on but to me it was even hard to tell that there was a bed from where i was standing so later i got to see it up close but they drove this atv an electric atv which dope awesome can't wait to see what that's actually like. I got to see it up close and personal and it is just bizarre and crazy that there's like, just doesn't, it, it's just mind blowing. The whole thing was just mind blowingly futuristic. It, it didn't feel like re reality, it felt like a movie. And when you see the ATV coming in, what happens is the, the truck actually has first off a, a ramp that's built into it that pops down. And then when it goes up, they plug the ATV in so it can charge from one of the 220 volt outlets in the back and you can see the car self leveling. So despite an ATV doing that, it's kind of useful to have plugs like that and Elon has stated this in the past. But overall, the design of it and the exterior are out of this world. Uh, Elon even tweeted earlier that the pressurized version of this can be used on Mars or will be used on Mars which is just crazy to think. It, it seems like it may actually fit better on Mars th than it does on a regular surface street here on, on Earth, uh, as crazy as that seems to think. So I don't expect a lot of people to be drawn to this, but I'm not sure if it's maybe one of those things where you know every time there's a new design or a shift in how something looks, there's an initial uh, kind of revolt or, 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 or kind of difficulty getting over it, and then maybe it becomes normal and looks better over time. Some of the B-roll shots that they had actually look really good, especially like the camping one and some of the desert ones. So the angles we saw and all that just looked, it was hard to get wrap your head around because it was so wildly different. And this goes back to my theme of how insane the whole thing was, and that is what, I and many people love about Tesla is that no one else is going to be doing this. No one else is going to be pushing the boundaries this far. Whether or not it'll actually sell, whether or not everyone else will get over that or really accept it, I, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm guessing not a lot of people on the mainstream side are really going to be into this. Probably the hardcore fans are, but we'll see how it shakes out as you know we get more data down the road when they when they start selling it. Speaking of selling it, well, it'll be a couple years. 2021 is when the first ones are going to be delivered, and then 2022 for the rest of them. Now, when they go to sell it, the price here is kind of crazy. The single motor version, and if you recall, that one got 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, 250 miles and 7,500 pounds towing, is $39,900, which is so cheap for a vehicle that is that capable. The dual motor one, again, 4.5 seconds, 0 to 60, 300 miles of range and 10,000 pounds towing, 49,900. And the tri-motor design, the highest end one, was 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, which most people probably can't fathom how quick in the, in the acceleration of what it feels like to go 0 to 60 in under three seconds. It's mind-blowingly quick. 500 plus miles of range, and 14,000 pounds towing, which is crazy in terms of all of the capacity here, $69,900, under $70,000. Now, of course, you can add the full self-driving package and that puts you over that, but these base prices are, are, are incredible. It's the first time I've ever looked at that and thought, wow, one of the, the best features of a Tesla is the price. Usually it's the opposite. Usually they're crazy expensive. So amazing however they were able to pull that off. Now let's move to the interior of the car because besides the actual specs and the price, this is probably my favorite part of the vehicle. When I got into the car, it was, it was, it's big, or truck, I should say. It's really comfortable. And there were three in the back, there are two in the front, and there was a third seat that can pop up from the middle in the front. So it's a six seater and it didn't feel cramped with three people in the back, three, you know, adult males. The interior is super clean, very minimalistic, similar to the Model 3, and the steering wheel, I don't know why they put the Roadster steering wheel in there. It shouldn't be a race car steering wheel. I don't imagine any person that drives a truck being comfortable having to do that all the time. So it's gonna be interesting if those features themselves make it to production exactly. Now this is the unveiling of it, so it'll have some tweaks between now and then, but it, um, you know, the interior was really nice. The, the, the glass panel on the back and the glass windshield on the front were, it made it feel like you were in this crazy futuristic pod, not like you were in a vehicle closed and cramped in there. Um, so, you know, definitely, 
kudos to the team for that because this was a really it felt great on the inside and I don't think anyone else would think otherwise it was obviously modern and futuristic but it didn't feel crazy it felt like nice like wow this is really great so I think there could probably be some some improvements there but overall it was it was really fantastic except for maybe the marble uh, front dashboard is that real marble dashboard? <laughs> I don't understand why that, yeah, okay. So anyways, there's that. Um, but overall, fantastic job in the interior. Now we can't really wrap this up or go further without talking about a comparison with Rivian. And you know, this vehicle is gonna stand on its own and they have all their ecosystem and everything involved. So it's different, right? Rivian and Tesla are completely different. They are different stages of their growth and their coming to market or whatever. So. Yeah, setting that all aside, if you just put these vehicles side by side and looked at the specs, what you're gonna find is that the Rivian can tow up to 11,000 pounds. It has a quad motor design, so that gives it some really interesting things. It has a tank turn feature, which will allow it to basically spin in place, which is kind of wild and awesome, probably actually somewhat useful. It gets zero to 60 in three seconds, and it can go up to 400 miles on a single charge. So I would say comparable in specs, you know, you can nitpick and yes, it can tow quite a bit more and 500 miles versus 400 miles and all that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, like the Tesla has better specs overall, uh, but the Rivian's not, not shabby it, it, by, by any stretch. I think the Rivian is a completely capable vehicle. I think that the biggest difference here between the Rivian R1T and the Tesla Cybertruck is that the price of the Rivian starts at $69,000. And if you recall, the top end Tesla Cybertruck is $69,900. So ironically, Tesla's really strong suit with this vehicle is the price. I mean, for that price, that's an extremely capable vehicle, which is kind of nuts to really think about it. Um, but, but that's what it is. Now, I'm guessing the Rivian R1T is gonna appeal to a lot more people. Um, of course, every vehicle has, you know, things about it that people will like or dislike or whatever. We all have our, our personal preferences, but clearly the Rivian looks much more like a, a truck that you would see out on the road, whereas a Cybertruck is this futuristic thing from a movie. It doesn't seem real, even after riding in it and then coming back and seeing it drive by, it, it's just bizarre, it's crazy. Um, but there it is, and uh, I mean, it. no one else in the world could do this but Elon and Tesla, Let's just put it that way. No other car company would ever have the guts to do it. So, so I applaud them for that, and I think that that's gonna actually yield some fruit in other ways. For example, if this truck, this cyber truck, can go 500 miles on a charge with a tri-motor design, that sounds very much like the new Plaid powertrain Model S coming out with the tri-motors that is you know, being tested out in Germany around the Nürburgring and all that. Well, if that can go 500 miles and the Roadster can reportedly go above 620 miles of range, what would the Model S get? Somewhere between there, probably closer to the Roadster. It's extremely aerodynamic, gonna, is gonna weigh a lot less. Yeah, I mean, I, I look forward actually to a lot of the things they did and a lot of the ways that they invented things and innovated here, making their way into some of the other vehicles and future generations of the vehicles because that I think is where there's gonna be a lot bigger boost. So imagine if you could buy a Model S with 500 miles of range, that, that's crazy, right? And then with the supercharger network and V3 charging and all that, yeah, I, I think, you know, that's where you're gonna have a bigger impact probably overall in terms of EV adoption or Tesla growth even. The Cybertruck itself is definitely not for everyone. Um, and I hope they do come out with maybe a mass market version of that someday. Right now, I think the design is probably just too hard for a lot of people to really get their heads around. You definitely will have people order it and that will open up the eyes and it'll be fun to see on the road and drive and all that kind of thing. Um, and maybe just the fact that it's gonna be such a capable vehicle at such a great price with such amazing performance and, and towing capacity and all those things, maybe that will win people over. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll kind of look past the futuristic kind of design and go into, okay, let's, let's try this out because I just literally can't get a vehicle this capable 
uh, for this price. I just can't, right? If you look at a regular F-150 or a Dodge Ram or something, I mean, you're looking sixty to $80,000 for some of these vehicles. So, you know, trucks, especially big ones that are really capable like this, are not cheap. And they don't get great mileage either. I mean, so, you know, when you think about all that put together, uh, I think that, you know, the design is the one big knock against this vehicle. And, you know, people, some people will get over that, already accepting it, already ordered it, but not everyone. And so we'll see kind of how it pans out. But let me know what you think. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe there's a big gotcha or something that, that I don't get. Um, but right now, it's hard for me to see this selling very well out there, despite it being incredible in, in some ways. So let me know what you think. And always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I also want to read a question from Will Cooper on Patreon, who asks about the battery technology and if this is going to use the same stuff that is coming from the Maxwell acquisition. Well, Will, we didn't hear any details about that. I actually suspect that the presentation was meant to go on much longer, but was cut short due to the uh, the glass breaking uh, as, it, as it wasn't designed to. Um, and I'm, I'm not quite sure if they're able, if they actually used any of the Maxwell stuff here. Um, what he's referring to, if you guys are unfamiliar, is Maxwell Technologies. It was a real recent acquisition from them. And one of the things about it was that they have kind of two main things, these super capacitors, which have their own you know, reasons to exist, but it wouldn't help in this regard. And they also have this dry electrode lithium ion battery. And with that, basically in the same form factor, in the same size of cell, it, it, you get the same energy density and everything, but it's about half the weight, which means that it would give you further range. It would give you a lot more range just because it has to, you know, takes less energy to move you forward. So uh, those are all, you know, things I've heard. I'm not sure on the details of all of them and they didn't announce anything, but if I were to take a guess, that's where I'd put it. Um, so I, you know, I don't know, we'll see, but definitely there's something major going on in the battery side because they're putting out some huge numbers when it comes to, uh, these new vehicles. And I just don't, I don't know how that's kind of really possible with, with current battery tech that we're aware of. So something's going on there. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not. Stay tuned. We'll learn more down the road. And if you would like to get your question answered like Will just did here uh, on the channel or on Patreon where I'm pretty active and I try to be really engaged with people, go to patreon.com slash and join the family. I'd love to see you there. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you back here next time.